Steve Ratner is here to explain the middle class miracle that is uh, President Trump's uh, <laughs> tax proposal. Well, because, because Mika, this is what know, they're saying. I'm, hey, everything's gone badly, but now yeah. we have tax reform. Here we go. So everyone's going to be okay. Uh, thank God. Go ahead. So Steve. three things to know about this and three charts to tell you about it. One, it does little or nothing for individual taxpayers, a lot for business. Two, it would significantly increase the national debt. And three, it is, it is really, really bad news for blue states, New York, Connecticut, California, that have high state and local taxes. So let's take a quick look at some of the numbers. If, uh, it's a $5.8 trillion tax cut um, on the top line, $3 trillion allegedly for individuals, $2.8 trillion for business over 10 years. But in fact, they eliminate a number of uh, important itemized deductions for individuals, particularly state and local taxes. And so on average, and these are all very rough early numbers because they haven't actually released all the details, but on average, uh, individual Americans, in fact, would have a small tax increase, but certainly no tax decrease, while business still has $2.5 trillion of tax cuts. So basically, $2.2 trillion of net tax cuts, all of it going to business. So right. you can imagine what $2.2 trillion of tax cuts does for the deficit. Under current law, our deficit would rise to 91% by 2027, up from about 68 or so, uh, I'm sorry, about 75% at the moment, 68% back in 2011. This tax plan would take it to at least 101%, and that doesn't include some other things that haven't been spelled out quite yet that could potentially take it higher. So for the first time since World War II, we would actually have debt larger than the size of our economy okay. under this plan. So and the middle class, how are they going to do? Well, the middle class, we don't, you know, there's a lot of puts and takes, but the answer is basically they're going to get nothing. Uh -huh. uh, that there's some gives and some takes, but on balance they get nothing. But look what happens to people who live in the blue states, uh, particularly Connecticut and New York. So they want to eliminate the deduction for state and local taxes, which is obviously a very big deal to people out, uh, in those parts of the country. And that would cost the average New Yorker or the average resident of, of Connecticut over $4,000. And then you can see the red states over here that have uh, only really property taxes, in many cases don't even have state income taxes, and they would have much smaller losses. So this would actually be quite devastating both for individuals who live in those states mm -hmm. as well as for the states themselves because they're going to have to deal with that problem. So, so when he says middle class miracle, as the president said yesterday, what's he talking about? This is a figment of his imagination. There really are no middle class tax cuts in here. They change the tax brackets around. They change the way standard deductions work, things like that. But there's really nothing there so for him. Is On this the like him saying that uh, Graham Castor would have passed, but for the sick senator that was hospitalized? <laughs> it was. It's a little like that. Hey, Alex, can I ask about? you really quickly? Um, we need to, I yeah, mean. Who is the, because we, I, you know, Willie and I do something. I read a report um, about him saying whenever, nasty, nasty things about Mitch McConnell and John McCain members behind closed doors. Mika, I'm trying Why? to do something here, okay? Sorry, go ahead. Good God! <laughs> so, Just adding a little color. Alex, <laughs> yeah, let, let's... Yep. I talk, then mm -hmm. you talk. <laughs> Good God, interrupting me. I just, I don't, where were I know. you raised? Can you believe people? <laughs> really? People? No, I really can't. So, Alex, <laughs> Willie and I, we're kind of candy stripers for the rich and yeah. powerful. Uh, and so anytime a member of the House or the Senate uh, go to the hospital, Willie and I are there. And Dan yeah. knows, because yeah. sometimes Dan will come along with us, too. Um, so, uh, could you tell me, what's the name of the senator that was ill and in the hospital and How's he doing? That stopped so, Cassidy Graham from passing. Well, that's I a packed to... question. So here's the deal. Okay. Senator Thad Cochran. Thad Cochran. He okay. was so at, we'll... but he was at home recuperating from a urological issue. Sorry for that oh, uh, terminology. Oh. But he was not in the hospital. <laughs> why why do you have it's too to... early for urological yeah. issues? Alex, you can he was not in the it? hospital, and he also um, would not have mattered whether he or not. He already had three people not voting for the bill, but, so he wouldn't have mattered. Where do we send the? Wait. I did. A urological issue. Okay. <laughs> Joe. He was not in the hospital. We're about and, facts here. And it would not have mattered, Willie. That's what. So, what is the president saying? I don't understand. He's sort of talking. It's kind of like, and kids, this is where we close the circle. It's kind of like the middle class miracle. It, it just doesn't exist. He's right. just, it's a figment of his imagination. 
And you know, he also came out yesterday. I love this. Came out yesterday going, yeah, Facebook, you know, fake news on Facebook had no impact. Like, he just denies. Yeah. The, like, the base, most basic realities, and he always has, but the pace of it actually is quickening. We got a fact check from Senator Cochran himself yesterday. Yes. Who tweeted this, thanks for the well wishes. <laughs> I'm not hospitalized. So, a question. Okay. Question so, for the table. Willie, maybe we can, maybe there's some city councilmen uh, that we can go visit. Perhaps. Can we get a refund on the edible arrangement question. we said? Yes. Since an okay. uh, uh, increasing number of people, uh, according to Quinnipiac, mm -hmm. think the president is not fit, when are we allowed to ask that question and it be okay? Well, I think you Believe already you have. have. <laughs> I have. Well, you, you, you all cringe <laughs> like Every it's day. inappropriate. And well. you've got a growing number of Americans who are saying he's not fit to be president. He says things that are not true mm -hmm. right. every day. Right. Look, he manipulates the truth. They're, they're trying to sell a people. bit of a Trojan horse. You know, there are tax cuts for individuals over here, but then they take them back over here. And so, in fact, this is, in, in its entirety, a tax cut for business. There's nothing for individuals. There's nothing there. But that, Mika, you're right. That number about fitness was amazing because that's not an approval rating. No. That's not, is he doing a good job or a that's, bad job? He's not that's okay. Should he be in the office? Is, he's, he's not fit to be saying. president. Not fit. Is At this point, I think we can honestly ask the question. To serve as president, 56% say. I mean, you called him downright stupid. He is not fit. I Ignorant, I think. Ignorant was the word. See, it's well, ignorant, interesting because when you say not, it, ignorant, it's okay. I, I defined it. If ignorant. I were to say this, Lord knows what will happen. As ignorant, uh, ignorant is lack of knowledge. So we've got misogynistic by issues as so well. But. He, could, he could work his way out of that if he chose to actually study something. Um, so, yeah. you know, what's interesting, Julie Pace, is in normal times, and these are certainly abnormal times, if you told somebody that uh, the president of their party had a 35, 36 percent approval rating and the Congress that they control had a 15, 16 percent approval rating, uh, they would say a landslide of, of epic proportions was coming. And I don't know, I, I, I get the feeling that because they ran against the least popular Democratic nominee in the history of America and Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. they somehow think that that's what they're going to face in the future. Is there an understanding on the Hill that that this Republican Party could be facing a political Armageddon? Yes and no. You hear a couple different things when you when you talk to Republicans on the Hill. I mean, one, the thing that they lean on, and this is this is legit, is that Democrats are really not in any better shape now than they True were uh, in 2016. So you have to put it in that context. Democrats don't really know what their message is going to be in 2018. Certainly, looking into 2020, it's really unclear what direction the party is going to go into. So Republicans can hang their hat on that. That's not you know great necessarily, but it is it is real. But this is where it, this is where they are on taxes. They they recognize that this plan that they rolled out yesterday is far from perfect. It is far from comprehensive, and that in the end it may end up being much narrower than what they laid out. But they know they have to pass something. They are petrified of heading into the midterms with nothing to run on, and that's where they are right now. With with yeah. the two failures on health care, with no movement on infrastructure, they literally have nothing to go to voters and say. This is what we accomplished being in the majority. And that is the main motivator on taxes right now. Even if it ends up being something narrower, even if it ends up being something that doesn't accomplish what they've said are their actual goals on a tax overhaul, they, you just get the sense that Republicans want to be able to vote for something, have a signing ceremony at the White House so that they can run on that right. and pretty much that alone next year. And they've lost their dignity you know, along the way you, as well. You know what? There's always this silver lining, though. <laughs> You know, that? And what they got? They got they they got the the uh, secretary of HHS. Oh mm. right. Yeah. So they got that to is on their just side. the EPA. beginning, my friend. Yeah. What's that? What do you there mean? There are a lot of uh, government planes being used. Yeah, the EPA administrator. Yeah. He's in There's there. There's more. Man, you talk about the swamp though. Seriously, this is a mess. This is I've never. This is a I've hot never mess. I've never seen more swamp-like behavior from cabinet. The secretary. family. It's important to remember that George H. W. Bush's chief of staff got fired and there was a national outrage because he drove a car from Washington to New York. 
And here you have Tom Price and you've got the EPA guy, Pruitt, you've got all of them flying around, literally like they're on a Zeppelin tour in 1971. <laughs> you know? I need to go get me some scotch. It's only in New York. But when Toronto? <laughs> Let's take the jet. It's not Friday, is it? So no, it's ahead. Thursday. Can you believe that, though? They're, they're living like Led Zeppelin. I've never, there's never been a swamp like this. Like Donald Trump's swamp is the swampiest swamp of all time. If you look at the cabinet secretaries and what they're doing, they are blowing uh, uh, You have to add the kids money. who are parent like counselors to the president we, who are on like modeling tours and I don't know what else, but there's so much going on there that's so inappropriate. It's just, that's it, the bottom it line. It is the biggest, it, the, we have never seen a I've swamp never seen anything like as it. murky as this. And, and uh, you know, you know, figure out who they're flying around, uh, the family. Who are they flying around on private government jets? Yeah. I mean, look into that. Look, at, look into all of this stuff. Again, I've never seen uh, a, a more waste a waste of, of taxpayer dollars by cabinet secretaries and people that work for the president of the United States. It's the swampiest behavior any of us have ever seen uh, in, in recent American politics. And still ahead, we'll speak with the man in charge of bringing tax reform across the finish line in the House, Congressman Kevin Brady, who chairs the Ways and Means Committee. Also with us, Chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, Congressman Mark Meadows joins the conversation. We're also going to have an English professor from Yale tell us that swampiest is now. Uh, it's, it's the word that all the kids are saying. Yeah. Plus, will Puerto Rico finally start getting the hurricane relief it so desperately this is needs? Unbelievable. We're gonna Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.